When you're first starting with SOLIDWORKS, a great way to learn is to reverse engineer other people's parts. There's a website called grabcad.com. and This is what it looks like before you log in. And after you log in, you'll see this. Lots of different parts. Items for free that you can look at. You can see if there's a file that's a SOLIDWORKS file. And there's lots of different ones. These are the most popular ones. If you want to, you can go over to New and see ones that have just been put on. And some are quite simple and some are very complex, but it's a great way to learn. Now I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer. But if you go to the library and then you go to Advanced Search, Find SOLIDWORKS, Now that we have SOLIDWORKS, go ahead and just type in a search. We're going to do faux or false thread. And come up with some items. So we're going to click at this false thread over here. And that brings us up to that area. Now you could download them all, but you're going to get all the renderings and everything. Which is fine if you want those. But if not, just download the individual SOLIDWORKS parts that you would like to look at. Now this is something that I did and this is, it's a different way of doing thread. You can do it the normal way and it's going to take a lot longer like if you have 500 bolts in your assembly it's going to take a lot longer to come up but by using this false thread it's much quicker and as you can see from these pictures it's really hard to tell the difference when you render them from the real helix, which is a normal thread. So this makes a good tutorial because we're going to get two things at once. So as you can see in this rendering, it's kind of hard unless you look carefully to tell which one is a false thread and which one is the real one. Now if you find somebody that you like their stuff, you can go up here to their profile, click on their projects, and if they have one good SOLIDWORKS thing, maybe they have a bunch. Maybe you want to learn how to do a 3D printed micro crawler or something. But as you can see, that's where we went and we found that false thread. So you can just go through all their projects. These all are all free and um, they're in all different forms of CAD. So make sure to look for the ones that have our SOLIDWORKS files. So once you've downloaded some part files to reverse an engineer, just open your SOLIDWORKS. and then go to the area where you downloaded them to and then click on one. Now it might be an older version of SOLIDWORKS which is no big deal, it'll just tell you that it's an older version and just go up and click the save button and it'll automatically change it to the newer version. So here we are, we have a false thread bolt that when you render it it's going to look very much like a normal bolt, but it acts very fast. You can move it around. It's easy and quick to build. And I can put 500 of these in an assembly, and they'll be as fast as maybe if I put 10 helix bolts in there. And believe me, you'll get a lot of bolts. So when you render them, as you can see here, they look very much, or if not exactly, the same as the ones that are going to take and slow down your models. But the whole point of this is to show you how to reverse engineer something. So let's say you found this and you want to say, hey, I want to see how this person made this bolt. So we're going to move it over here to the side a little bit and then blow it up. And right down here is a blue line. And if you put your mouse cursor over that, it turns into a hand. Now if you push down on your, your normal mouse button, while it's over it, you can move that blue line up and down. And as you move it around, it'll show you how they made the part. Obviously, the top items are the first items they made, and as it goes down, it goes into the part as they make it. So it's slided all the way up here to the beginning. And in the earlier tutorials, we talked about this normal too. Now if we click on it, it gives us something, but it may not be what we want. So let's go over here right click on the sketch and then click on the edit sketch and then go up to normal 2, click on it and it will give us the view of how they made that. 
So as you can see, they used a polygon to make that bolt head. And it was measured from here down to here to get 0.5625. Now I know I made this and I don't like to dimension them that way anymore. I dimension them right off the circle inside the polygon. It works the same because it's touching all the edges and it'll give you the same measurement. I just find I like it that to measure it better that way. No big deal if we change it because now if we get out of the smart dimension and then click and get out of the sketch, we can see that it makes the same part. We just mentioned it a little different. Once again, many ways to do the same thing. Now if we pull it down a little more, it gives us this little cut on the bottom like bolts have. We'll do it again so you can see it happening. And you're wondering, well, how did they do that? Just go right click, go to the sketch, edit sketch, click on it, hit normal too. And now we can see that all to do that, it was just a circle was drawn but it's cutting to the outside, which is kind of interesting. So we need to see how they did that. So no, go to the cut extrude, right click on it, then go up to edit feature, click on that, and it'll show you how they did that. You can see it says flip side to cut. And if they click that button and I'll see that arrow goes, it shows you which way it's gonna cut. So we just showed you another way to cut items. You don't always have to cut inside the item you draw. It can actually cut outside of it. So once again, that's how it's done. Right click, click on edit feature. If we click it off and then try it, we can see how something else happens. So now we know how to make a little dome in if we want to. So we click it on again and then we can go down here and we see that they're tapering it in or draft at an angle of 60 degrees. So we can turn off that angle and then turn, change the way it's cut and it gives you a whole different part. Turn the flip side to cut on and we turn back on the angle. Now it gave us a different angle, no big deal. Just start clicking in there and it'll kind of show you the angle that was there before, 60 degrees. To kind of help you remember what were the last items that were typed in there. So we re-add the 60 degrees back to what it was. And then we click the green arrow and for OK. And the part's back to the way it was. If you ever screw something up, no big deal. Just go up to undo and click undo. So we go to the next step. Well, we didn't really see it happen, so let's do it over. Let's take our mouse, click on the little blue line. When we get the hand, move it up. Click on the blue line, bring it down. Now we made the body of the bolt. And we can see it's just a sketch, no big deal. Right click, click on X, edit feature. And then we can see it's a blind extrude up 1.5 inches. So this is a 1.5 inch bolt. Now it's merging the result, which that's the common thing it's going to do. You don't have to worry about clicking that. It's always going to do that. The reason is, if we go up here and look up here, we don't see anything that says solid bodies. And I showed you that before because when we go down and we turn off the merge result, now those are two different items. They look like they're connected, but they're actually two different solid bodies. And while it's called cut extrude, you could call that anything. You could call it bolt head, and you could call that bolt length or bolt body. You can name those if you want to. But anyway, if we go up there, down here, and then put the merge result back on, now you can see that solid body is gone because it's just one all solid body. There'll be times that you want to do that. Now see. What I did is I did I the sketch open and I kind of split it. No big deal. I can just click on it. I think I screwed something up and I'm not sure. I think I didn't, but if I'm not sure, just go up in here and undo and it'll kind of take you back to where you were. And now we can just pull it all the way down there. Now we're back to the normal. So the whole point of this is that just pull up a part and start going around and checking out to see how they did stuff. Like here you can see the used to revolve cut to cut that first thread. 
We can see the sketch. This is false thread, so it's not going in a helix down. It's just going all around. It's just trying to give a visual. And believe me, if you're doing renderings, it looks a lot better to have some false thread on there that looks like real thread than just a simple little bolt that just looks like that. It's not going to look very good in your renderings, but this will if you put this false thread in there. Use it all the time. People ask me why I can draw stuff so fast and why it works so fast. I tell them that a lot of times I can put all my fasteners in there and this false thread makes them run really fast in my simulations. And nobody knows the difference unless you actually open up the bolt part and see that it's false thread. You don't know. But most of my people that aren't actually standing and looking over my shoulder when I'm drawing, they only see the renderings, the end part. So this false thread works great. So once again, we're just kind of going down, checking things out. And I'm not really even explaining how we're doing this stuff because the whole idea of reverse engineering is you're just kind of looking to see what the other person did. You see that they made this pattern of all that thread. So they took that one cut that we just made and they can run it down six times, four times, and it creates the thread. It's just a pattern. You're telling it to go down 0 0.0625 or a sixteenth of an inch eight times. Now if we change it, now we're just telling it to go down a sixteenth of an inch two times. So it takes the original cut and then it does a second cut. So it always counts the first cut as in one of those. So if we take it down 16 times at 16th of an inch, obviously we took it down about an inch. Now there's kind of this neat thing that you can do. Not just in this, but in anything when you're doing a dimension, you can do math. So if I want to take 16th of an inch or 0 0.0625 plus an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125. I just type plus 125 and then press enter. And it does the math and it changes it to 3 sixteenths or 0.1875. It's really handy. Now we got an error there because it took too many cuts past the actual part. So we just put four there. And you see now it's just taking four cuts. So now you're kind of getting an idea how you could draw other parts that have nothing to do with thread, but you can use a pattern. Now we'll do a tutorial later about patterns, but for right now, you can see also you can do fractions. 1 slash by 16, or 1 divided by 16 equals 1 16th, 0 0.0625. That comes in real handy. Like if we want to do 3 quarter, just type 3 slash mark, 4, boom. Done. You'd have 0.75. But for now, we're using 1 16th. So that's pretty much it. Give it a try, pull up some parts, and try some reverse engineering. It's the fastest way to learn. There you go.